Okay, let's go ahead and find the area of this triangle right here. And you can see this triangle. Its base is 4 and its height is 3. So we're talking about this little triangle right here. So we want to find the area of it. And we're going to find the area of that triangle using basic math. I'm going to give you the formula for the area of a triangle. Hopefully you remember what that is. But I'll give that to you in a second. And uh, literally this will just take us a couple quick uh, calculations. And we will have the area of this triangle using basic mathematics. But then we're going to go ahead and find the area of this uh, same triangle using calculus. So calculus, such a mysterious word. And uh, to uh, use calculus, we'll need this little piece of information right here. And this y equals 3 fourths x is just a, um, it's the equation to this line right here. Okay, and this line obviously is uh, forming this triangle with, again, the height of 3 and the base of 4, but we're going to uh, show you here, or I'm going to show you, um, exactly how we can use calculus as well to find the area of this triangle. And the work is not, um, it's a couple more steps uh, than using this basic formula right here, but it's not that difficult. So really the whole main idea of this video is not to find the area of a triangle. I mean, this is a good little review for that as well, but it's just to give you an appreciation of the power and use, usefulness of calculus, okay? Now, we're not going to want to use calculus to find areas of triangles, but I'm going to show you how we can uh, use calculus to find the area of all kinds of crazy objects uh, that you might encounter where you may not have a formula handy. So we're going to talk about all this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here very, very soon in a matter of a few weeks. So uh, that's, uh, you know, I love um, advanced mathematics, so I can't wait to get that uh, course out there. But um, I also have many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, um, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, or Alex uh, test, uh, CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher's certification exam, maybe, maybe a nursing school entrance exam like the TAS, uh, any of those exams or all those exams and many others have significant math on the exam. So people have to take these exams for or take um, certain exams for all kinds of reasons. Uh, to get to where they want to go in life. But um, if you don't do well on the math section, you don't do well on exams, so let me help you prepare. Just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you're studying for. If I do not, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program and working with homeschoolers for uh, 15 plus years. Then obviously I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you truly are serious about wanting to improve or learn mathematics, then you must be serious about this, and that is note-taking, okay? Uh, so over decades of teaching math, it's apparent to me that those students who take the time and effort on a daily basis to take great math notes, they almost always do very, very well, and that's not surprising. And then the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone, talk to their buddies in class, and maybe do their homework in an, for another class during math class. All the stuff that I did way back in the 1980s, except for the cell phone part. Uh, none of our uh, myself or anyone else had cell phones. And by the way, those cell phones were like huge. They were like, you know, the size of a book, and they cost like five thousand dollars. But I don't want to digress too far down memory lane. And of course, he couldn't do anything fancy. Well, maybe you could. I mean, I don't know if you could have text or whatnot. But uh, nevertheless, we were. Uh, I was certainly distracted, and my grades reflected that. Okay, so they weren't good. So the bottom line is this: if you truly are serious about uh, wanting to do well in math, you have to take great notes. All right. So just there's no shortcuts. Uh, if there was, I certainly would tell you that or tell you those uh, little hacks and tricks and shortcuts, but unfortunately there isn't when it comes to note-taking. Now, as you're improving in your notes, um, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this triangle problem. Again, we want to find the area of this triangle right here. 
Um, its uh, height is 3, its base is 4. So if you think you remember the formula, go ahead and quickly do it, uh, do the calculations. I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. So if you don't want to see uh, the solution just yet, pause the video, but let's get to it. All right, so here is basic math. So to find the area of this triangle, we need to know the formula for an area of your triangle. Okay, luckily, we have one, and here it is right here in its glory. The area of a triangle is equal to one-half base times height. Now, depending on the kind of um, uh, the orientation of the triangle, we'll have to figure out what the base and height is. Uh, for, but this particular one, this is a nice, lovely uh, right triangle, so we can... Uh, look at four as the base and three as the height. So we're literally just plug in those values. So the area is going to be one half uh, base, which is four, and the height is three. So one half times four times three is 12. 12, one half of 12 is six. So the area of that triangle is six. And that is that. Okay, so we're, you know, if you got six, then I must uh, give you a nice little happy face with a check mark. Now that was super easy. But what was, um, you know, the key to doing this problem? Well, it was a formula, okay? Formula for the area of a triangle. So, you know, luckily, if you come across any triangle, right, anything like this or whatever the case is, you can always use this uh, formula as long as you uh, can determine uh, the base and the height of those triangles. So that's awesome, all right? Now, let's check out how we can use calculus. Now, obviously, the... Um, Area is six, so the answer is not going to change, but the, our approach is going to be completely different. So let's show you how calculus uh, works. All right, now I've done uh, quite a few videos on calculus and the essence of it, and uh, my um, kind of uh, goal in all those other videos and this one as well is just to show you the application of calculus. So calculus, we have this crazy looking symbol right here. This little thing right here looks kind of like an S, right? So S is uh, um, the first letter, obviously, in the word sum. And this little thing is what we call an elongated S. So it's like an S stretched out. So we're really kind of finding the sum. But what we're going to be doing in calculus, we're going to be finding the area. So this little thing is called an integral, or the symbol itself is called uh, an elongated S. But basically what we're going to be doing is finding... Uh, all these little tiny little rectangles that can fit underneath here because we can find the area of a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is very easy. So let's say I have a rectangle, uh, its base is 2 and its height is 10. What's the area of that? It's 2 times 10 is 20. Okay. So uh, what we do in calculus is we find the area of all these little triangles that could fit underneath this, I'm sorry, all the area of all these little rectangular strips, if you will, Okay, that can fit underneath this triangle. Now, if you have big, thick uh, rectangles, then our area uh, estimation is not going to be so good. But if we had like infinitely skinny little rectangles, we could have a precise, matter of fact, an exact, okay, if we had infinitely skinny little rectangles, we can have the exact area of this triangle. And that is uh, effectively... Uh, what calculus allows us to do. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why do I need to do all this crazy stuff right here? I don't want to do calculus. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to take the easy way out. And I agree, you should take the easy way out. However, I'm going to get to the mechanics of this particular problem here in a second. What if, uh, instead of a triangle, what if we were trying to find the area of something like this? Okay, so now we're looking at like this thing right here. And so some of you might be like, no problem. Give me the uh, formula for the area of this. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what we call this, right? Let's call it a thingamajiggy, all right? A thingamajiggy, whatever the case is. I'll just <laughs> abbreviate it. So you go uh, in your math book and you look up, hey, uh, what's the formula for a thingamajiggy? And unfortunately, there is no formula, okay, for this uh, object. So you're like, oh, no formula. How am I going to do this? Well, calculus would be your, uh, you know, superpower right here. You, you need calculus in order to do this problem, okay? Now, uh, obviously, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how calculus works to find the area of this particular triangle. But 
the same technique as what I'm going to show you right here could be applied to find the area of this guy as well. You know, it's obviously a little bit more uh, challenging. The math is a little bit more involved, but not that much more involved. Okay, but that's for another video, another time. So, okay, so what do, what do we do here? Well, here we have uh, our little uh, triangle. Okay, its base is four, its height is three, but uh, this, the hypotenuse, this part of the triangle, uh, this is a line, okay? Now, if you understand lines like y equals mx plus b, and I'm really kind of gauging this or gearing this uh, a video towards anyone who's taken any kind of basic algebra, right? But even if you haven't taken any um, algebra, this little equation, y equals 3 fourths x, is the equation for this line right here, okay? That's what that is. Now, this point, 4, 3, happens to be th the corner of this triangle. So in calculus we can uh, write ourselves a little kind of uh, prescription here of how to find the area. So we're gonna say this little long S, we're gonna say, all right, uh, we wanna find all the little rectangles, okay, like I just described here, um, for this function right here, 3 fourths X, all right? So we wanna find all the rectangles under this line, okay? And I get borders the X axis, and then we put a little x right there. And this dx, that's just a little notation that we, we use. But I want to count the rectangles from 0. This is 0, 0, all the way out to 4. Okay? So I'm going to start from 0, and I'm going to go to 4. So that's how we find the area okay, of this triangle. Right? So we're basically uh, kind of programming our little calculus notations. So we're like, all right, start from 0, go all the way out to 4 and find all the little uh, rectangular strips underneath this uh, line, okay? This uh, line right here, and this line, if you go straight down perpendicular, it forms a triangle. So I know I'm kind of I'm kind of keeping this very basic, but if you understand so far what I'm talking about, then that's excellent. Okay, so now what we have to do is do the mechanics of actually calculating this out. So we're going to have to solve this basic integral problem. So this is called integration in calculus, this is all, and basically just means to add up, and effectively what we're going to be doing is adding up all these little infinite tiny little rectangular strips, but uh, uh, we have some pretty easy way of adding this up. We're not going to have to do an infinite uh, amount of addition, okay? So luckily, uh, I'm going to show you this now. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, evaluate this integral. We have to find the integral of 3 fourths x, okay? So don't worry about this notation. This isn't a formal calculus course, but basically I got to get rid of this little symbol here, and I got to, this symbol, this elongated s is integral 3 fourths x. I have to do something with that. Well, in calculus, we actually have a formula, and basically it states this. So this 3 fourths x, this x here is really x to the first power. So I want you, I want you to just kind of focus in on this part. So here is what the formula tells us in calculus. So that power 1, see that little 1 right there? Okay. You add a 1 to it. It's always a 1. Okay. Another, so if that was squared, we would still add a 1. Or if this was like x to the fourth, we'd still add a 1. So it's going to be 1 plus 1, which is in fact what? 2. Okay. So we're going to write 3 fourths x. We're going to increase that little power by 1. So that's going to be 2. And then whatever that power turned out to be, in this case, it's x to the second power, okay, you're going to divide by that little, um, that exponent. So in this case, it's 2. So we're going to divide that 3 fourths x squared by 2. Okay, so if you understand that, you uh, understand basic integration and calculus. Now, um, this little x thing, this is a basic polynomial, and there's all kind. There's different type of rules that we need to use uh, to uh, find the integral in calculus. But this is a very, very common uh, rule right here. Right, but it's not difficult to follow. Right, I mean, so far, hopefully, you know, this isn't too scary. So now we have to figure out three fourths x squared divided by two. Okay, so three fourths divided by two. When you do that lovely little fraction math, you would get 3 eighths x squared. So just do the, let's do this real quick. 3 fourths divided by 2 is equal to 3 fourths times 1 half, of course, that's 3 eighths. By the way, if you have any trouble with fractions, I have a ton of uh, 
videos uh, about fractions on my YouTube channel, uh, just check out my pre-algebra playlist. All right, so we've um, took the uh, integral here. That's what we're doing. But you know, don't let this the terminology scare you. We just did. We just used this symbol, and it told us to do this. Okay, which got us right here. All right, so this turned into this, 3 eighths x squared. So you're like, okay, great, what do I do with that? Well, this right here will allow us to actually find the area. Now, so remember, we're adding up the triangle from zero to uh, four, right? So remember over here, we're going from zero to four. Now, this little formula right here, this 3 eighths x squared, is what will actually allow us to calculate the area, okay? So here's how it works. So we, we're gonna, let me just show you right here, you can see the area is six, but uh, we have this three eighths x squared, and we're gonna subtract it from three eighths x squared. Now here, we're gonna plug in for x, we're gonna let x is equal to four, all right? So here's a little triangle right here. So it's four, and here's zero. So it kind of works uh, a little bit in reverse. So this is going to be your ending point right there, and this will be your starting point right here. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x right there, and then I'm going to plug in 4 for x right here. And when I do that calculation, this was the area of that triangle. Okay, so this, is, uh, this is how this works. Now you can see when I plug in 0 for x right here, this whole thing will just be 0. So really what I have to figure out what is what 3 eighths uh, 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 and I'm going to put it in 4, and I'm going to square it right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the math I already did. So here it is. So I have 3 eighths. I'm plugging that 4 squared. 4 squared, of course, is 16. So 8 goes into 16. 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And that should look familiar to you because that is, in fact, the same area answer as when we use the formula way over here okay area is equal to six but uh, you know we obviously use calculus now would you use calculus is it practical to use calculus here to find the area of this triangle uh, the answer is no okay it would not be uh, practical uh, we want to use our lovely formulas right so like area of a circle um, of a you know like a rectangle circle triangle um, no, those basic figures, uh, things like that. Yeah, we definitely want to use our formula, but when we come across a thingamajiggy or some sort of crazy object and we're like, okay, there is no formula, well, then we got to go ahead and uh, break out our calculus skills, okay? So just a quick introduction of calculus and its application. Again, even if you, um, uh, you know, only know some basic algebra here, uh, hopefully this video, you know, makes some sense, okay? Now, I would love nothing more for you to eventually one day take calculus, and it is a serious uh, mathematics in terms of how advanced it is. There is, uh, you know, I'm I try to minimize it, and you certainly need to be ready for it because there is a lot of advanced concepts in calculus, but we could distill down the basic essence of, you know, um, what calculus does for us, the kind of problems it solves for us by a problem like this. So hopefully you found this interesting and uh, even more so, hopefully even liked it. And if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Um, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus videos on my channel. Um, so if you go to my channel, you'll see uh, various levels of mathematics, basic to advanced math playlists. They're all there for you. My passion is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of the videos that I've done and the videos I will be doing. But um, again, my best math help will be within my math help program. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.